Great. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Bob Wang, and I'm the country manager for Greater China and the Korea region uh, at Pomatic. And with me today is our dearest partner and a guest speaker, uh, Mr. Sean Li. Uh, so, Sean, could you uh, introduce yourself and your company, please? Okay. So, um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sean, and I manage uh, overall ad monetization at Lightroom an app developer for Laramie. Um, I'm super, super excited to be here um, at MGS and participate in this fireside chat by Pubmatic. Um, for those of you who may not have heard of um, Alarmy yet, it's a global top alarm app. It's funny that I say it myself, but <laughs> it's a top alarm app. And um, we wake up 2.3 million users every day, every morning. And uh, yeah, um, many people ask how just an alarm app can succeed in the global market. Well, even our just mobile devices also provide alarm features, right? Um, well, it's fairly simple. We solve a simple but a very important problem of getting back to sleep after dismissing the alarm, which I'm pretty sure many of you also have experienced in the morning before. So this is something really uh, critical for the users because these kind of problems can um, cause them cause people to be late to their school appointments and work. So uh, we, we define these people as heavy sleepers and the cause of this problem is not because they're lazy or they're weak-willed people, right? Um, it's not exactly their fault. Um, it's just because there, there's chances for everyone in this room also as well to have a really bad condition in the morning and you know, just not being able to wake up. So every night, people just uh, struggle to set their alarms. And in the morning, they fight back again, ironically, not to wake up, right? So uh, we, we try to fix these kind of problems by um, helping our users get a better quality sleep at night. And in the morning, we help them really listen to the alarm and just wake up completely and fully. So this is our goal, and our, our ultimate goal is to help these users wake up fully in the morning. Right, that sounds uh, really great. I mean, it's just um, to think about your missions to wake um, people properly and have a great morning to start with on the daily life is, right? So personally for me, I think before using Alarmy, I do have the experience of missing flights, but uh, luckily enough with Alarmy service, I didn't miss mine, you know, uh, yesterday going to this event, obviously. So uh, I think that's definitely generating a lot of uh, value for the end users, uh, and, you know, but if we zoom out a little bit and uh, to think about not only for one you know, apps or specific uh, apps mission, uh, but to talk about um, mobile app industry. Uh, so Sean, really uh, a, a question is that how has the mobile app industry uh, you know, developing for the last two years in Korea market? Uh, and do you see any difference comparing uh, this market with the other markets worldwide, please? Um, so I guess the last two years has been really harsh in the Korean industry for the app developers, um, regardless of gaming or non-gaming uh, business. Um, many startup companies had to cut down their expenses, and obviously marketing budget was the first to be affected by these kind of changes, So, uh, and which also led to decrease in ad revenue of app publishers as well. So now the app publishers, they just must try really, really hard, much harder to earn ad revenue. And it requires better ad quality, powerful ad placements, um, integration with many more ad networks, and a lot of optimizations. Um, one of the interesting changes that I recently noticed is that many publishers who didn't used to consider ad monetization before are actually uh, adopting ad monetization nowadays and making revenue to survive. So this is actually because the investment for the app publishers in the market has also decreased. Yeah. And but however, things are, I think, better for the global market and for the global publishers as well, because we are seeing a growth in the performance in the US and Europe. So I guess expanding your services to global could be also one of the ways to um, raise your revenues. Sure, definitely. A uh, great insight, Sean, and, and the challenge you've observed, I think, applies to uh, many uh, mobile app publishers as well. Uh, and, um, you know, sent from Pomatic's 
uh, uh, perspective and our observation, it also occurs to us that uh, historically, a lot of publishers were not even considering for ad monetization, but now they are adding ads into their apps. At the same time, uh, their were publishers were only working with two or three platforms for their the entire ad uh, monetization. But for the recent years, they've started to use uh, mediation platforms to manage tens of ad networks. So in, on the purpose to increase the total ad revenue generated. Right, so with that as a context, so just want to uh, ask the follow up question uh, to you for your business uh, as well is Sean, how does uh, Delight Room's business doing uh, so far for, for, for the progress of uh, 2024? Uh, is there any um, thing, you know, uh, any um, plan change for H2 uh, given their H1 performance, please? So, well, well, yes, um, I guess we made a lot of plans in the beginning of the year, and um, there has been a lot of changes. Yeah. And uh, one of the plans I had in the beginning of the year is that I would not um, speak on, on stage. <laughs> that was one of the plans. Right. Um, but here we are speaking here in the fireside chat. So I guess um, that's one plan that's changed. Yeah. Um, we had some other plans um, as well, um, both business and product wise, we had a lot of plans, but they also changed as well as the situations changed and we needed to uh, make a lot of adjustments. So um, business wise, we had our plans on ad monetization in Alarmy minimized in the beginning of the year, but as the ECPM, the price we get for the um, ads, uh, quite dramatically um, decreased in the first quarter. We changed our plans, and uh, we had to increase the ad impression volume because you know the price went down. So we have to make a lot of more volumes to recover the revenue. Yeah. And um, so we we immediately increased the um, ad impression um, very uh, immediately through the uh, various various adjustments. And also we worked on um, adding more demands from the advertiser sides uh, so that we can have the ECPM back on track. So um, as a result of the changes, and which was a good change, uh, we were not only able to recover the revenue, but we also increased uh, revenue in iOS especially by uh, 20%. Well, 20%, that's, that's definitely a fantastic result, uh, and congratulations for the achievement for sure. Uh, right, so revenue aside, maybe I think we can switch gears a little bit and, and, and look into the uh, uh, alarm is services as well, I think. Um, what make Alarmy different is that Alarmy is a very inno uh, innovative, uh, like free freemium app. So, how did your team come up with uh, ideas for premium features, which generate a lot of added, uh, you know, values for your users? Please. So, um, I guess I must say that it's all about um, solving users' problems, and that's where the ideas come from. Um, Although I'm very confident that our free features are powerful enough uh, to wake users up completely, um, especially in the early stages of using our app. But the problem here is that the users actually uh, adapt to the free features and eventually, and they go back to sleep again one day. So for example, uh, the calculation, sk uh, calculation skills of the users using the math missions improve every day and it doesn't fully wake them up anymore one day. So it's actually great to have our users calculation skills increase but it's not exactly the purpose of our app right so no. um, that's one of the problems that we can right. face through this so um, just a sec. Yep. so for such reasons um, there also was a user who solves uh, 99 mass problems every day to wake up 99 problems and wow. um, as much time that it would take for this user and how pain imagine like how painful it could be uh, we figured that we needed to provide more powerful missions to the users who can't, so that they can't adapt to the um, features, as well as adding some more additional features other than the missions, uh, mission alarms. So that's why we released premium missions, such as typing missions, in which you have to type in like uh, motivational phrases. And we also um, added like walking missions, which actually tracks the number of steps that you walk. Uh, squat missions, like which tracks the number of scores that you complete. And we also released like additional features such as like label reminder, like which reads you the label you have in the alarm every day. Right. And um, we also have this feature uh, called like wake up check. So it actually checks whether you're, you, you are like really awake. And if it seems that you are back on sleep, 
then the alarm goes off again, and so does your lovely uh, missions as well. Uh, and we also take the voice of users very seriously, and they actually it's really important to like listen to the voices of users because they often give you like great ideas of the features that you must have. So uh, one of the great ideas we earned from our user is that um, it's a multiple mission, um, allowing users to create an alarm with a set of missions in different types, such as like typing one motiva motivational phrase and then doing 10 rounds of squats. So it actually helps you wake up your, uh, help, helps you wake your brain and body up. Right. And the users like literally sent us the emails that they are willing to pay for this feature. So we were actually happy to uh, provide, the, provide them the features and we, we actually helped their wishes come true. And it was a win-win for both of us. Well, it sounds lovely, and, and really, that's really creative, a, a, a creative ideas and high engagement uh, with the users. It's just amazing receiving emails like, you know, users would like to pay. So uh, that actually go very hand in hand with my follow-up question uh, here, uh, really quick on the premium features. Is that um, you have the premium features now, so how you balance uh, the business models of user subscription? Uh, together with anonymization, and which one is your focus uh, of your app, please? So uh, for that question, I must say uh, both is important for us, but I guess I have to put a little more weight on um, app monetization, simply because um, not every user in the world, world can pay for subscription of an alarm app. And our goal is to make more and more users use alarm uh, alarm me and actually wake up in the morning in a, and have a more successful morning. Right. So this is, and that's regardless of their willingness to pay. So yeah. that's the reason why. Um, the, I guess the balance of the business model could be different for every app. And I think the key here is how much you know about your users, um, their age, their ability to pay, uh, your app quality to increase their willingness to pay and more. Right. So uh, unless you have a team that has the patience, the time, um, and the money to like create a high quality app and also have a strong confidence on targeting the right users from the beginning mm -hmm. with the features on the right value. I really recommend that you start your app with um, MVP model and have minimum ad monetization in the beginning. Right. Study your users, add more values, and then start considering subscription model mm -hmm. as your product and business grows. Yeah. And once your app uh, business has reached a certain level of um, having a high quality features and enough users to make purchases, that's when you should start reducing ad monetization and also put more weight on subscription. Right. So that's kind of the balance there. Yeah. And, um, and I guess there's also other ways of like um, adding in more value, such as mm. uh, one of the interesting ways uh, that we could have an example is Netflix model. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure all of you here in the room uses Netflix. Yeah. Um, Starting as a premium app, the subs um, which Netflix has, the subscription and adding um, ad monetization. So I, I, I found the recent success of uh, Netflix with the ad monetization very interesting because Netflix has high quality, uh, high, has highly increased their um, MAU by providing standard with ads, right. the new subscription model, uh, which have not only added the ad revenue, but also increased subscription revenue because they had much more users subscribing through this uh, yeah, subscription model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree a lot uh, you know, on, on what you, you just said, Sean, and you know, I think it's a great point, especially when, when it comes to balancing the business model. Uh, what's really key is to understand and know your users. So I, I think yeah, you made a great point in saying that not every app is, uh, is the same, so it can be different uh, you know, when, when they are choosing their business model. Uh, and, but I think for, uh, you also made, mentioned that it's not possible for every user for, for pay for app services. I, I do believe that is very, very key. So in terms of those non-paid users or free users, then ad monetization is definitely very important uh, for any app developer to get money back uh, so they can continue to invest in their services. And in those kind of the situations, I think the experience with ads is also very, very important. Uh, for example, their branding as focus platforms can help the app publishers to increase their session time each time using an app or the total in-app uses time. So uh, that actually in line with my next question here is that 
Um, Sean, when did you start to work with platforms such as Pomadi, who is focusing on branding as and why, please? So, um, working in the ad monetization side, we always seek for new partners. We work co work with a lot of platforms. And um, so we are always looking, uh, seeking for the new ones. Um, and there was an insight shared in the market that uh, brand ads could be a great incremental revenue source in diversifying the revenue stream and also in improving the ad experience of the app users. So as we care a really a lot about the app users as well, um, we've known Pubmatic to have a lot of brand, brand demands. And that's why we planned on testing and also integrating so that we can um, have start to work together. Sure, appreciate it uh, a lot. And I uh, guess uh, for that part, I can really uh, add a, a couple of things uh, here. Uh, so, uh, you know, to the, the audience here on the, uh, you know, versus branding as versus performance as or user acquisition campaigns, I know a lot of marketers here is focusing a lot on in-app, uh, you know, user acquisition. But if we think about from the publisher's perspective, what matters is that really increase the size of the monetization cake. So if we think about the, the, the budgets as a whole for advertising, uh, and, and user acquisition is a very big piece of pie, it's a very big cake already. So it's consider it's a nine inch cake. However, adding branding dollars into it is basically enlarge that cake to 12 cent cake. So it's easier to cut a bigger piece of pie if you're adding you know, branding dollars in, uh, in for that. And then when we're looking at the uh, asks for the branding advertisers, their needs are quite different with the performance or just high conversion advertisers. So they are more user friendly, either focusing on impression. Normally these not so much of a CTR, so that's the last opportunity for any mobile app user to jump out of the original user experience like in Alami. So they don't have to, you know, CNS and then jump into an app store and then download another app basically for making money for, you know, for the original app, but just, you know, see a few ads and the money is already in the pocket. And last but not least, I think uh, if we think about the branding as the difference with the performance ads is that uh, really diversify the performance on different ad placement, including, for example, uh, you know, banner ads. Uh, that is not actually a focus. A lot of the platforms focusing so much on user acquisition and performance driven. However, uh, branding platforms can really diversify and perform really well in those ad placement. So that's just one uh, to add 50, 50 cents to your answer that, you know, maybe that's some of the reasons you, you, you choose to work with, you know, new platforms, I guess. Yes, so I guess that's really an uh, interesting point that we can add um, new revenue stream and also uh, increase user experiences using brands ads. Yeah, appreciate it. So, but I'm pretty sure that the audience here is more interested or prefer to hear more from you. So uh, I won't, you know, talk too much about Pomadi services, but, you know, uh, for the next two questions, I think uh, perhaps we can uh, differ a little bit and to, to, to look into the future. So, and also hear uh, from your sharing about the challenges right uh, right now. So, uh, what do you think, Sean, are the challenges you are facing with uh, ad monetization today and how you are going to solve those challenges? So, I think um, every day is a challenge that we <laughs> face. <laughs> every day we um, go to work and see the um, ad revenue performances. That's a challenge. But, um, I believe that one of the biggest challenges uh, in the ad monetization is increasing ad revenue without impacting um, on user experience. So I guess I'm pretty sure everyone will agree to that. Um, and it's been a, a real challenge for us as well, which is why we always test it for changes in ad monetization and take a real close look into the user data. Not only the retention, but, we, but many more like that relates to the overall usage of our app. And I think the key here is that you always have to provide the equivalent or higher amount of value to users in return to showing them ads. For example, um, adding interstitial ad placement in Alarmy has been a big wish of mine for a long time. Not just for the revenue, but I wanted to see the potential of ha uh, adding a new ad format uh, we couldn't try before. Mm -hmm. However, it was really hard for an an alarm app to provide equivalent value of interstitial ads that shows full screen video for five seconds. Right. right. So recently, we finally managed to add uh, interstitial ad pla placements, and this is how the scenario goes. 
because uh, users at Alarmy snooze their alarms five times in average every day. Mm -hmm. And but this delays the time the users wake up, right? And right. this is not something that we want to recommend users to do so. Um, no. So what we did was we changed the default settings of the uh, snooze limits, which was originally um, unlimited, but we changed right. it to three times. And then, and then for the users who may want to snooze more than three times, um, we allowed the users to uh, we we allowed the users one extra time to snooze their alarms. But instead, they have to see an interstitial ads. So that was the one of the tricks that we did. And the users were not really very annoyed by the ad because they can snooze alarm one last time, right. which they really wanted to in the morning because they're yeah. stressful. Yeah. And um, uh, when they really wanted to. And for those users who may be a little annoyed, um, that was fine for us as well because this feature was also meant to um, send them a message that we don't recommend this kind of behavior of the users of right. snoozing every morning, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, we could send them the message. So as a result, uh, the users mostly appreciated this feature and also like fully understood the purpose of the why we are providing such things. And they had a very few negative comments in user voices. You can never have zero, but very few is a good, um, <laughs> good performance and had no impact in the retention as well. So yeah. it was an ending as a success. Yeah, fantastic to hear. And that's really a great example of designing an ad placement uh, within a product with a high consideration of adding you know, value to the users, right? So it's eventually it's a very great result. Um, so great to hear all the uh, you know, insights and sharing so far, Sean. So I'm thinking about maybe we um, look ahead a little bit. So. Uh, that will be the focus of the next two questions. Uh, and the first one, uh, let's start from privacy. <laughs> you know, as the privacy policies uh, involves at a global, uh, global scale, uh, is there any impact to your monetization uh, revenue uh, for now? And uh, what is your strategy uh, towards the privacy changes going forward, please? So I think privacy policy is something that we have uh, more impact for the global publishers rather than the ones just focusing in Korea. Sure. Because there are much more privacy uh, policies happening in global wise. Yeah. So um, it has huge impacts on the monetization side as well. Right. Simply because it limits you from uh, getting users' audience data. Yeah. And this leads to the decrease in the marketing budgets that you can receive. True. So, um, so however, uh, we were able to minimize the, d uh, the damage by quickly adopting the privacy policies in advance, uh, spending much effort in making users allow our app to collect their audience data and showing them targeting ads. So uh, for example, we have a 94.3% 90, of uh, consent rate for GDPR, which applies to Europe, right. yeah. uh, which is much higher than the market average of 86% consent rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so fully agree with, with uh, you know, your point here, Sean. The key is really to plan and act proactively uh, you know, on a global scale uh, you know, into a certain market for, for the policies and, and looking into how the, the change to uh, minimize and mitigate all, all the you know, impact on automatization. And uh, the, the practice is caused by like, leading platforms or you know, can be making changes in the coming years as well. I think the recent uh, update we, we heard from the uh, uh, Privacy Sandbox update um, you know, made the uh, access to GDPR you know, kind of in, you know, uh, in question for next year. But uh, I think that's definitely one topic for every mobile publisher to basically keep a, clo a close eye on because next year I think there's, there's going to be some change, right? So the recent development is that there's a little bit of flip flop. Uh, so we don't, we don't know for sure, but I think definitely an area to look into. Uh, so I guess, sorry, uh, Sean, uh, I, I guess maybe it's time for kind of one last question here because we've been talking about future. Uh, what is your outlook uh, for the next three years in terms of the mobile app business? And uh, please, if you may, uh, do you have any advice given to the audience today or given to the uh, mobile app community, please? Sure. So I guess uh, you've, you've already mentioned about the privacy sandbox, um, which was actually planned this year, but it's delayed. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, we're hoping that it will be delayed again next year. <laughs> yeah. But um, sure. 
So one of the other changes that uh, we are seeing a lot recently in the market uh, today is that the generative AI, uh, AI is a really hot thing here. Right. And um, not just the ChatGPT, but the other uh, generative AI is also um, impacting the app publishers industry a lot. So yeah. what we're seeing is that there are a lot of apps created from the uh, generative AI yeah. and adding up to the, um, added to the app store recently. Sure. And even my non-engineer based friends are like creating their own apps. Right. So yeah, yeah, I've been hearing a lot from them. And <laughs> in yeah. the next three years, I think I'm quite sure that um, these changes will just go on and there'll be a lot of much more apps. And sure. it will make users have much higher standard on choosing what apps they want to use. So either you choose to go along, go along with the trend or not, the app publishers will have to provide like differentiated value, much stronger features to the users, and I believe that it involves some human touch in solving people's problem. Right. So some, I think that's something that AI just might not be like able to fully solve itself. So I think yeah. that's where the focus is on. So in Alarmy and Delight Room will solve people's wellness problem for sleeping at night, from, from sleeping at night to uh, waking up in the morning uh -huh. using human and AI, and AI powers. Right. So I hope the app publishers here in the audience here today will also find their own way to solve people's problem as well. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Sean. I think it's all about uh, you know, solving people's need or fixing the problem. So uh, I think at Pomatic as a vendor or service, we provide is all about solving our you know, uh, partner's needs or solving their uh, problems. So we will be continuously focusing on optimizing the ad revenue generated and the ad experience. So helping our partner to addressing uh, their needs while they focusing or like companies like you focusing on generating value or solving issues for your users. So I think that's basically summarizes today. And uh, again, thank you so much, uh, you know, we, uh, to, to, to share with us today, Sean, uh, for your time. Uh, I guess to the audience here, uh, maybe if you may uh, spend the next five seconds to sc uh, scan a QR code, uh, we'll be putting a QR code on stage uh, to follow up a little bit on uh, Pomati, uh, if you are interested. Uh, but uh, that concludes the session today. And thank you so much again, Sean, for your time. Thank you. And thank you for your time as well.